นมัตถุรัตนตยศาสตร์เบยเพย์มอยคอมเมชเชอร์เดอร์ทริปเปิลเจมดับบูดาเดนามันสังเคกุณีบิงเอเวอร์วันแอนด์เวลคัมยูบักทูออนไลน์ชอนดิงทูบแอนด์เมดิเทชันออเกนิซ์บายเดอะบูดาปฏิบัติทิมบุกอัตไทบุริสเทมเปิลอินวิมบิดินลอนดอนอังกฤษ Today is Saturday, the 19th of September, 2020. I would like to update you all on the late restoration project. We have been working since July, and now we are still working, and we try to restore the lake and canal back to them. Than better condition. Um, at the Buddha Bati Bat Temple, we are not completely closed. So we request for volunteers, for donors to register themselves before they visit the temple. But the temple is not actually open to the general public yet. What I mean by general public is that. Walking around in the ground is not permitted. You need to have the reason why you visit the temple. For example, you want to have the service, or you like, um, you want to um, do a dana, or you would like to become a volunteer. And the meditation classes on Tuesday and Thursday, on Sundays, on Saturday and Sunday, are still suspended. Um, now we have the meditation online, and every second and fourth Tuesday, every third and third Saturday of each month, and we normally start from half past one until nine p.m. Right, and now we are going to start the evening session with the chanting. So I hope you can see the screen. And if you can see the screen, could you please raise your hand? Just want to check. Thank you. Right. Now, when you are ready, yes, I need to share our. Live to all the pages that I manage. When you're ready, please put your hands together. Okay, hold on, hold on, because there are some more people who want to join. So wait for a while. Right, when you're ready, we will chant together. อาราหังสัมมาสัมปุโตภะคะวะพุทธังภะคะวันตังอภิวาเทมิสวะคะโตภะคะวะตาธโมธรรมังนามาสัมิสุปฏิปันโนภะคะวะโตสาวกสังโฆสังขังนามามิน้ำโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะ
นโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนโมตัสสะภะคะวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะรายเวลคัมยูบัคทูดิออนไลน์ชอนดิ้งทูบแอนด์มิเดเทชั่นออแกเนสบายดับบูดาปติบาร์เทมเบิลลอนดอน And every second and fourth Tuesday, and also every first and third Saturday of each month, and from half past one, sorry, from half past seven until 9 p.m. And this online session is organized in order to give support to our friends and meditation student to continue their meditation practice. Although the temple is not open for meditation classes or any public gathering yet, but with the technology, um, I think we can take advantage of this technology by and having this kind of online activity. Um, I had a long day today, and so I have invited. คุณกมลทิพย์ถึงกีฟอัตโต้ on the topic that seemed to be very interesting because from my understanding I have been in a, in, in a monastic life for all my life since I was 13 years old in some way as a monk we don't actually understand The lay perspective, yeah, for example, when they start meditation and how meditation help them or how meditation deal with, uh, how meditation bring about mental well-being. So tonight, um, I'm very glad to invite Kun g a m o n t i p Evans, and I think all of you are familiar with her face because and. When we have meditation class at the Buddha Bhati Bhak Temple, Kun k a m u n t i p came to help. Um, every Tuesday, if I'm not wrong, yeah, every Tuesday or Saturday something. Um, tonight, Kun k a m u n t i p will be talking about meditation and mental well-being, and then I will leave. Five minutes for questions, just for those who would like to ask question regarding the topic. Okay, Kun g a m o n t i p whenever you're ready, you can start your talk. Namaskar. So, okay, so Namaskar, p r a j a n and good evening, friends in Dharma. Our mental well-being relies on positive thoughts, feelings, emotions, how well we cope. With stressful events in our everyday life, and we are living in a challenging time. During lockdown, each week seemed like forever, stuck in the doldrums when nothing much happened. After lockdown came new normal, another readjustment we needed to make. Now the prospect of another lockdown emerges, adding more worries, fears, and anxiety. Our mental health is affected, in as much as. We want to keep things under control, so we feel more safe, secure. But events in life are unpredictable and beyond our control. This brings more stress and frustration. Meditation helps to maintain our mental well-being. It provides us with several coping strategies, such as understanding, acceptance, predictability, sense of control. Positive changes in neuroplasticity and sleep quality. So let's start with understanding. The aim of mindfulness is to develop wisdom to understand things as they are. We may understand things, people, situation, and ourselves intellectually, but we are still confused, stuck in the past, worry about the future. Our mind lacks understanding; it can't let go. 
Mental stress comes from our thoughts. We just sit doing nothing and become stressed because the mind is doing a lot of talking and wandering around. The mind has a tendency to dwell on negative things, unfinished business or the unwanted past. And it keeps doing this when we are about to rest or relax. So if we are not mindful, we will fall into the trap, lost in thoughts and negative emotions. Scientists found that we think about 70,000 thoughts per day, 80% of which is negative, 95% repetitive. So imagine if we think negative thoughts repeatedly and for a long time, we can be at risk of falling into depression. We become less productive, stress hormone cortisol is released, motivation hormone dopamine is reduced, we feel demotivated. So if we are mindful of our thought, we will see that thought comes and goes and it keeps changing. So we learn not to identify with it, attach to it, or become one with our thought. This won't happen straight away, but gradually. Now, some of us lament over the joyful past and some want to undo the past they don't like. We know we can't change the past, but we keep revisiting it and our mind gets stuck in it. So if we dwell too much on the future, we become worried. Our mind spends a lot of time plotting and planning for the future. For example, we need to finish all the housework before we can rest. We need to achieve something before we can feel satisfied. We need to buy a house to feel happier. The waiting list goes on and on. The mind keeps yearning for what we don't have. But when we get what we want, the mind will move the goalposts further. So we keep yearning for the greener grass on the other side, rather than being content with what we have in the here and now. We keep waiting for the next better things and we develop the habit of waiting to be happy. We forget to be happy right now. When we practice, we look at the rising and falling sensations of the abdomen. At the same time, we will notice that with each rising and falling, there is a beginning, a middle, and an ending to each sensation. So we can apply that to um, when we look at our thoughts as well. Never reject or suppress thought. When you do that, it will be kept in the brain's amygdala, the brain's emotional center, waiting to be triggered. But if you are mindful of thought and label the sensation as thinking, thinking, it will be sent to the prefrontal cortex, responsible for reasoning and analytical think uh, thinking. Stress is reduced. When you're mindful, the activity in the amygdala is also decreased. In the long run, the size of the amygdala is found to be smaller. You become calmer. Study or studies also showed that those who practice mindfulness for a long time, their prefrontal cortex becomes thicker. They react, uh, they react less to the situation. It is thought that mindfulness might help with the prevention of Alzheimer. Now, another part of the brain called hippocampus. This is the part of the brain that deals with memory becomes thicker as well, which means that our memory is also improved with mindfulness. So mindfulness can change our brain and behavior in a positive way. The Buddha said that no enemy can harm you as much as your own thought unguarded. Shakespeare wrote that nothing is good or bad, 
but thinking makes it so. So we need to be mindful of our thoughts. Meditation, meditators tend to get frustrated when their mind won't stop chattering and they give up. There is nothing wrong with thinking. We can use thoughts for our practice. Observe it like you are watching your most favorite TV program over and over again until you can predict what's going to happen next or who is going to say what. You know it back to front. When you watch the same program many times over and know it all, you get bored and can't be bothered to watch it again. Likewise, the mind can't be bothered to dwell on those troublesome thoughts because it already understands them. Eventually, you'll become more aware when thought arises and you can stop it straight away. Another thought may pop up. You can keep looking at it and see the speed of thought that comes and goes. It's quite fun and fascinating to watch. Thought is also useful for reflecting, uh, reflecting practice in order to understand things as they are, that they are impermanent, stressful, and not self. So when the mind is very focused and at peace, it may switch automatically to vipassana mode. That is, it will start con um, contemplating by itself. Many people have been practicing meditation for a long time, but they never contemplate. The two need to go together. How many times did you think about letting go and then a few minutes later you change your mind and carry on getting angry? When the mind understands let, letting go is instant, is spontaneous and uplifting. But this doesn't mean that that's it. We still need to maintain mindfulness and keep observing. It's like you have been collecting a lot of evidence from your observation. And in the right moment, the mind just clicked and you will have that eureka or aha moment. And the emotional burden or mental stress is lifted. Now, when you're faced with stress, or a stressful event in your life, a trained mind will come to your rescue. Let me share a personal story with you. When my three-year-old son suffered from leukemia, I spent four years in and out of hospital with him. It could have been a very stressful time had it not been for mindfulness that saved me at the darkest hours. I sat by his bed in hospital and watched day and night at the other parents and children who were more or less in the same boat. Every night at 10 p.m., the nurses would come in to the ward to give chemo drugs. All the children would be crying in unison. After the crying died down, I would hear some parents sobbing. This went on for almost two weeks. I witnessed suffering all around me. One night, the child in the bed opposite my son's had to be wheeled out of the room in emergency. Doctors and nurses gathered and discussed what to do next. As I was watching this, it dawned on me that I'm not the only one suffering. This suffering is not personal, but universal. At that moment, something wonderful happened. The burden of suffering was lifted. All of a sudden, I felt free. I accepted the situation. My mind was no longer in conflict with reality. There was no more of why me or feeling sorry for myself. The sense of freedom and happiness just flushed through my body and I was sitting there smiling in the dark. It was so strange how one could feel so happy and completely at peace in the midst of all the sufferings. It was difficult to explain. The mind understood and 
it let go by itself. The meditation practice also teaches us to trace back to the cause. If we treat the symptom but not the cause, we feel temporarily relieved but not cured. When stress strikes, rather than facing it, we reject it, distract it, and try to run away from it. We watch more TV, party, go on holiday to escape it, only to find that stressful thoughts follow us everywhere. Interestingly, another defense mechanism that people use is that rather than facing the cause, they, they choose to dwell into painful past and blame the situation from the past so that they don't have to face the reality of the present that seems too confusing to resolve. But every time they go hiding in the past, the pain is strengthened. They might not feel any happier, but they feel more safe and secure because the past feels more familiar than the uncertainty of the future. Mindfulness teaches us to face the reality, the cause, understand it, let go of it. When we can do this, we become emotionally stronger. Now, as meditators, many of us have fear of pain. After sitting for quite a while, the body starts to ache. Fear puts the body under stress alert. The muscles tighten up, the pain intensifies. So when we look at, pa uh, look at pain, it moves around the body, which shows that pain is not permanent. Last week, we had Kun Sang Tong as a guest speaker. He taught me meditation about 10 years ago while I was experiencing excruciating pain from sitting meditation. He said, nobody dies from pain in sitting meditation. It was funny, but it helped me to persevere. A short while later, the pain disappeared completely. The body felt lighter, allowing me to enjoy more sitting meditation without pain. I learned later that this has to do with hormone endorphins being released and it helps to reduce the perception of pain. Just like those who run in the marathon, the body is put under stress, but if they carry on beyond that pain threshold, endorphins will be released and they can carry on. I remember another occasion when I got flu during meditation retreat. I had high fever and my head was thumping with a headache. I asked the monk that what, what I should do. He said, you have two choices, go to bed or carry on practicing. I thought about it and decided that going to bed is not an option. I carried on with walking meditation. I fought hard to concentrate on each step. After half an hour, my body was fighting back. It started shaking. I was sweating all over. And the flu was completely gone. So when stressed, if you're mindful, you will notice physical changes that takes place as well. Your muscles tighten, your breathing become, uh, becomes faster and shallower. We feel as if we are short of breath. Blood pressure increases. Those who are used to comfort eating uh, to deal with stress may reach out for snacks. This is because when we are stressed, the sympathetic nervous system is taking control. Sympathetic nervous system is linked to our heart, lungs, eyes, pancreas, intestines, bladder, etc. The lungs expand to get more oxygen in and we are out of breath. Our sensory perception becomes sharper and muscles tense up to prepare us for fight or flight response. We also need energy. So we snack more on sweet and fatty food. 
But when you calm down the sympathetic nervous system, but you, but you can calm down the sympathetic nervous system by breathing slowly and deeply. And when you do that, the parasympathetic nervous system will come into play and help to relax you. However, if the lungs are in the middle of grasping for air, just wait and observe first. Gently does it. When you are in a hurry, you become stressed already and you can make things worse. So change your breathing slowly and gently. The mind can only focus on one thing at a time. There are many ways to deal with stress in a mindful way and shifting the attention from stressful event to breathing is one of them or to bodily awareness is another. Now, what about our emotion? Mindfulness helps us to understand our emotion and let go of it. So if we look at the word emotion, E means to and from, motion suggests uh, movements. So this suggests that when there is emotion, the mind has moved from its balancing state. Scientists found that um, there are about 34,000 emotions all around the world. Most of us probably can think of about seven to 10 emotions. So when we experience emotion, chemicals are released into our bloodstream. These can last between 60 to 90 seconds, but the emotion can remain up to between one and five minutes, which shows that emotion is only temporarily and impermanent. Would you trust something that comes and go within five minutes? Would you be patient enough to watch your emotion next time? If you experience unpleasant emotion, you know that this too will pass. Watch it to see it. Seeing this for yourself is empowering in itself. Now, when you watch your emotion, make sure that you don't season it. When you eat food, you season it with salt, pepper to make it taste better and enjoyable. Likewise, when you are angry, we unknowingly season it with our thoughts such as, they did this to me last week and the week before. Why do they have to do it? Why do they have to be so annoying? Will they do it again? This is how you season it. You go back and forth from past to future and get lost in it. The more thoughts you use to season and fuel your anger, the longer it will last. One lady complained about her anger. When she was told to be mindful of it, she said, yes, I knew I was angry, but I enjoyed it while I was at it, and then I regretted it afterwards. So if you enjoy getting angry, you need to look at your thought seasonings. Anger is like fire. If you don't add fuel to it, the fire will stop. So no seasonings. Scientists found that emotional memory lasts longer than any other types of memory. So the more, the more reason why you keep remembering upsetting incidents or people who make you angry. But you can also use your emotion for a positive effect as well. Use it to become more mindful about your own emotions. Or if you have a young child and you want to encourage the child to love reading, you can put him or her in your lap and read to them. They will feel the love and affection and grow up to love reading. What about positive emotions such as love? Well, any extreme feeling will result in stress hormone being released. However, when people are in love, there are other hormonal release such as dopamine, which keeps us motivated in love, oxytocin, a bonding hormone. But like all other sensations, this is subject to change. 
Studies found that love hormones only last for two years. So if we understand things as they are, we won't suffer much when love dies or when we fall out of love. Now, according to the news, this COVID pandemic put a lot of pressure on many relationships, but this need not be. When we contemplate the fact that death is just around the corner, nobody knows when, when or where we will die. This can help strengthen the relationship even more. Now talking about sense of control as a coping strategy, when we understand things as they are, we don't seek to control others or external things, but we seek to control our mind to keep it still so that it will have clarity. There are so many meditation methods that we can choose from to suit our tendency. A few weeks ago, Ajahn Pasagon talked about mindfulness of the body and how to contemplate on the 32 parts of the body or reflecting on the repulsiveness of the body. This too is very effective in helping the mind to let go of self. Now in Thailand, some temples keep all corpses with the skin withered to the bones in the glass cabinet to help meditators contemplate on the impermanence and repulsiveness of the body. These corpses also remind us that one day we too will be just like that. I remember when, when the monk told us to contemplate on the body by imagining taking each part of the body out layer by layer. First, take the hair out, then the skin. You will see red flesh and muscles oozing with blood. You keep peeling layer after layer until you get to the skeleton and then you put everything back together again. So when you get to the skeleton level, there is no difference between a man or a woman. When you contemplate more on this, it helps the mind to let go of self temporarily. When you get to the state where you feel that there is no me, no mind, no self, you are left with inexplicable happiness. That's another way of mindfulness practice. And finally, a good mental health needs a good quality sleep. When we are worried, we think ourselves to sleeplessness. Stress hormones are released. Mindfulness can help us with this. We think when we breathe in, we can't think when we breathe out, unless there is a pause in our breathing out, thought will arise. When we breathe in, scientists found that it activates the brain cells. Hence, the thought. When we breathe out, it deactivates the brain cells. Thought stops. So if you make your breathing out longer than your breathing in, you can't hold on to your thoughts and you will soon nod off. The sleep deprivation can affect your brain functioning. You can't think clearly or make a good decision. Studies also show that a sleep deprived person tend to think that they are right. So never argue with an insomnia. And if you meditate before bed, studies show that it helps to release melatonin, which is a sleep aid hormone and you will sleep better. Now, some people try to sleep to forget the stress. This doesn't necessarily work. Because if you think stressful thought or experience stress before bed, the brain will revise it during sleep. You will dream about it. And this will enhance memory consolidation. As soon as you wake up, you will be thinking. You'll be thinking about this first thing. So don't sleep on it. Meditate. Free your mind. 
and have a better night's sleep. So all in all, meditation helps tremendously with our mental and physical well-being. It brings understanding, acceptance, predictability. It gives us a sense of control and empowering us. It also enhances positive neuroplasticity. But above all, it helps us to let go, live in peace, and enjoy life regardless. Thank you. Thank you, Commander Evans, for um, the excellent talk. Uh, as you can see, that um, the talk we informed very insightful. Um, some of our used um, speaker. Um, perhaps could you please turn it on? Right, um, well, now you have another perspective from the lay meditation uh, student and also now a teacher. Um, Kun Gomontip has been learning and teaching meditation for several years. So in many ways, and she accumulate their experience or in their experience from other students. I thought it's a good chance to learn how we can make use meditation, especially for lay people, especially during the situation of COVID-19 pandemic. And now um, we are open for questions, not only questions, and if you would like to share your experience, you can do so. So anyone who has question, um, you just admit yourself and then you can speak because there are only nine of us, there are not many. Right, any question? <laughs> yeah, if you want to ask question, you need to admit yourself first. Well, and if no one has question, and perhaps I just would like to put some question uh, to Kun Gamun Tip. Well, as, as a monk, often we have people who have a problem with mental issue. It's for example, those who are insane, those who are uh, broken down and then Although I try to help them, I try to explain to them, but it doesn't seem that they, they listen to me because they repeat the same question. They repeat asking me the same question again and again. And why is it, why is that? It's on and on again. I said, well, you don't actually follow my guidance. Um, in that case, as a lay person, do you have any suggestion for those who have like a, a like a, those who ha have a heart broken or those who are broken down and then those who lost it's like a day the state of the mind is no longer stable they are very emotional very sensitive so my question is how can we use meditation to bring the mind back to the normal state? It's like the mind is already damaged and now they want to restore the mind back to the, 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 the original state or to the normal state. Do you have any suggestion for that? Yeah, please admit yourself. <laughs> Some of the um, symptoms can be chronic, and if it is chronic, they need to see a psychologist. Yeah. Um, but if it's not chronic, um, meditation certainly helps a lot. So um, if they come and do meditation, it's just trying to help them to see things in reality, because sometimes they live in the past. So if you keep talking to them and bring them to the present moment, uh, rather than being stuck in the past, I, uh, that, that tends to help, but it takes quite a while. Mm. 
Well, I said that it would take time. You, so you have to be patient. Yes. Try to be at the now, try to be mindful. Um, well, for those whose mind is damaged, I suggest them to, to be aware of that step. So as much as they can do, um, when we walk, the tr I suggest them to count how many steps they make. But no need to be too serious. Um, I use this technique in order to um, develop mindfulness or to encourage them to be more aware of what we do. And the purpose of this suggestion is to tell them how to stay at the present moment. It's like they are mostly in the past because something keep running in the head and they keep asking the same question again and again and they never get the answer. So I said, well, you try to ask less question why, but instead try to, to understand what is what. Because whenever you ask the question why, when you have got the answer, then there will be another question why. So the question why we go on and on, on and on, it will be endless. And if you try to locate what the problem is and try to understand what is what, and then it stops. Um, well, anyone who would like to share your experience? No? <laughs> Graham, would you like to say something? We can't hear you. Hi, can you hear me now? Mon? Hi. Mon, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Mon. Yeah. As, as, you, as you probably know, I, I suffer great pain, uh, physical pain. Um, I was just going to ask your opinion on pain. Like, I have been told that I, I don't like putting a, a name to it. They call it chronic pain, which I don't like to have a sort of a name attached to it. But uh, it's such a pain where uh, I've been loads of medication and I try not to take it. That's why I do a lot of meditation. But the pain is endless and it never finishes. It's like, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's, I've got a problem with nervous, my nervous system. So I, don't, I think it probably goes deeper, you know. So I, I try and deal with it mindfully and just accept the pain. But it, it, it wears you down after some time as well. It's hard, you know. When, you, when you're in a situation where you're in pain all the time, like I, it's been so long I've forgotten what it's like not to be in pain. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, you know, it's quite tough. But, you know, I, that's why meditation helps me a lot. But it, 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 it's quite challenging at times. Mm. And I just wanted to know if you've got an opinion on it or do you just think it's because it's a medical condition where it is my medical like my, my nervous system like that they were talking about doing some injections into my my nervous system to block it or stuff that i don't know you see i don't know what they're mm. so I'm not right um again um looking at, at pain when when you're mindful it tends to help relieve uh, pain mm. uh, temporarily but uh, not always but um contemplating on on pain uh, tends to help because um i met mm. um I met um, a monk who, an enlightened monk, a while ago, and he was in pain. He could not, he could not walk, yeah. and he was almost a hundred years old. He could not walk. So they, he lived in in the forest all through his life until his monk life, and then they had to bring him back when he could no longer walk. And I asked him whether he was in pain. He said yes. I take, I said, do you take um, painkillers? He said no. I said, you go to the hospital and see the doctor and see whether something can be done. He said, no. I said, why not? He said, because pain, pain is just pain. It's not, it's not your body. It's, it's, it's not you. It's not yours. It's not you. It's true. So it's true. he just separated the, the two and he was able to live happily. And um, so he just moved around. I don't know how he moved because when I, when I went to pay respect and I was putting, arranging some flowers and he moved to sit in front of me and he sat in them, uh, meditative 
posture, just with his back straight as well. And he sat there for half an hour until I left and uh, without showing any sign of pain. And he said, the pain is just pain, it's not me. So mm -hmm. um, you just have to keep contemplating. Yeah. I suppose, yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mon. Yeah, no, that's very, very true. So Graham, I have some oh, some suggestions for you. Um, okay. and I think I have told you this before that you can take advantage of pain. Mm -hmm. um, by contemplating on pain, that means you make use of the pain. You can use pain as meditation. Yeah, object. Yeah. When we meditate on pain, we <clears throat> have a desire to make it go away. And we observe pain with the purpose to see the true nature of pain. Um, I don't have the direct experience with pain, um, but from my understanding, when we have this up to a certain level, when our mind has, can distinguish the body from pain. So pain is pain. Whenever we are able to distinguish the body from the mind, so pain is just a kind of feeling. Whenever we are able to let go, and then although the pain is still there, but you won't feel it, but this means that you need to have a high level of concentration. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I thought of what happened to the Buddha when he was in, in great pain. And then he meditated. So he meditated mm. with the power of concentration. His pain reduced. Although the Buddha, and who was the enlightened one, but he still had pain because his body was similar to all of us here. Um, he was still hungry. He still mm -hmm. need food to sustain the body. So when this happened, what we can do is to take advantage of, of pain by observing it. Yeah, observing it. Um, sometimes it disappears, but if it is a chronic one, of course, it will go on and on. But at least we can think, well, at least it's not, it's not worse. At least I can walk. At least yeah. I can sit, even just for uh, 10 to 5 minutes or, or 5 to 10 minutes or even 15 minutes. Right. If anyone has a question. Yeah. And now the time is 20 past. We're going to go for a short meditation. Right, if no one has question, now I'm going to lead uh, you all to do a 20 minutes meditation. You may adjust your clothing or adjust your sitting position. So we set the alarm for 25 minutes. Close your eyes, put both hands on your lap. Remember to relax the body and mind. 
if you sit either on the floor, on the chair, or on the sofa. Make sure that you sit with a straight back. Then breathe in and breathe out normally. We shouldn't force the wind into our nostril. Breathe in, breathe out normally as we do in our daily life. And then apply mindfulness to see when breathing occurs. Or if you follow rising and falling method, observe rising and falling movements of your abdomen. Distraction may come from time to time. Immediately after you know that you are distracted, at the moment when you know that you are distracted, you regain your mindfulness. You can name it distraction, 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 and then let it go. When distraction is gone, then bring the mind back to concentrate on rising and filling movements of the abdomen. The more you observe distraction, the more you gain mindfulness and the less you have distraction. Observing distraction is the best way to deal with distraction. Because every time when you observe distraction, you know that there is distraction. At the same time, our mindfulness is developing. Please continue meditating until you hear the meditation go.
please open your eyes slowly and mindfully. Now you may do some a little exercise by moving your head around slowly and mindfully. Okay, now we go to do the um, radiation of loving kindness. Well, again, I want to remind you that on uh, next session, we'll be on um, Tuesday, on Tuesday the 22nd. And then we go um, to November, Saturday the 7th, Tuesday the 10th, Saturday the 21st, and Tuesday the 24th. In October, we have four days, Saturday the 3rd, Tuesday the 13th, Saturday the 17th, and Tuesday the 27th. Then in December, we have four days as well, Saturday the 5th, Tuesday the 8th, Saturday the 19th and Tuesday the 22nd. And the topic can be changed depending on the situation, but I will try to stick to the Mahasiddhi Badana Sutta or the discourse on mindfulness, but I just would like to change the atmosphere. So sometimes I will invite the guest speaker to give us a different perspective and so that you can learn something uh, new. Right, now we're going to um, do with the um, radiation of loving kindness together. So when you are ready, please put your hand together like this. And after me in Bali language. Ahang so keto ho mi Neto ko ho mi Awero ho mi a paya bacho homi, a ni ko homi, so ki atanang bari harami. Together, please. May I be happy. May I be free from suffering. May I be free from hatred. May I be free from hurtfulness. May I be free from troubles of body and mind. May I be able to protect my own happiness. Of the mean body language. Sape sata sukita honto neto ka honto a wera honto a paya pacha honto a ni ka honto suke atanang. Pariharanto, whatever beings there are, may they be happy, may they be free from suffering, may they be free from hatred, may they be free from hurtfulness, may they be free from troubles of body and mind, may they be able to protect their own happiness. And now, transference of merit of the main Bali language. Itang me mata pito nang ho to sukita hon to mata pita ro. May this merit accrue to my mother and father. May they be well and happy. Itang me, 
ุรุปัจชาจริยานังโหโตสุขิตาหนโตคุรุปัจชาจริยา May this merit accrue to my teachers. May they be well and happy. i t a n g m e y a t i m i t t a n a n g h o t o s u k i t a h o n t o y a t i m i t t a May this merit accrue to all my relatives and friends. May they be well and happy. อีทางเมคุนูปะการะการนังโหโตสุขิตาหนโตคุนูปะการะกา May this merit accrue to my supporters benefactors May they be well and happy อีทางเมสัพเพสังเทวานังโหโตสุขิตาหนโตสัพเพเทวา May this merit accrue to all gods May they be well and happy อีทังเมสัพเพสังเปตานังโหโตสุขิตาหนตูสัพเพเปตา May this merit accrue to hungry ghosts May they be well and happy อีทังเมเวรีปุคลานังโหตูสุขิตาหนตูเวรีปุคลา May this merit accrue to my enemies. May they be well and happy. อีทังเมสัพเพสังสัตตานังโหโตสุขิตาหนโตสัพเพสัตตา May this merit accrue to all beings. May they be well and happy. Now, reflection on the five remembrances to be recited on daily basis. After me in Bali language, Chara Tamom Hi Charang Anati To. I'm of the nature to grow old. There is no way to escape growing old. p a y a t i Tamom Hi p a y a t i n อนาติโต I'm of the nature to have ill health. There is no way to escape having ill health. มรณะธรรมมหิมรณังอนาติโต I'm of the nature to die. There is no way to escape death. สัพเพหิเมปิเยหิมะนาเปหินานาพาโววินาพาโว All that is dear to me and everyone I love are of the nature to change. There is no way to escape being separated from them. กัมมะสะโกมหิกัมมะทายาโทกัมมะโยนิกัมมะพันธุกัมมะปะติสะระโนยังกัมมังกะริสามิกันละยานังวาปาปะกังวาตัดสะทายาโทภาวิสามิ My actions are my only true belongings. I'm the heir to my actions. Born of my actions, related to my actions, a b i d supported by my actions. Whatever actions I shall do, for good or for ill, of that I will be the heir. 
เอวังอัมเหหิอะพินหังปัจจเวกคิตาพัง Thus we choose frequently recollect So last one we're gonna say closing h o m e s to the t r i p a n Jam together this time only in Bali language together please อาระหังสัมมาสัมพุทโธภะคะวะพุทธังภะคะวันตังอภิวาเทมิสวาคาโตภะคะวะตาธรรมโมธรรมังนามาสามิสุปฏิปันโนภะคะวะโตสาวกัสังโฆสังขังนามามิรายเดทัมอิสทูทูนอยนะไม่เพอร์เฟกต์ว่าน่าละชันอีกอยู่ว่าไหนจะพูดสิ่งใดหรืออีกอยู่ถ้าสงสัยคุณสามารถใช้เวลาในการถามถ้าไม่ได้We're gonna see you again next Tuesday on the twenty second. No question, right? Can I, can I just say uh, thank you to Monty for a lovely talk, a wonderful talk, and very insightful. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, on behalf of the the group. And also on behalf of the Buddha p a t i p a Temple, I also would like to say thank you to k u n k o m o n t i p Excellent talk. Um, well, if you would like to listen to her talk again, um, I should know that we go live on Facebook, so you can go back to listen to her talk again on Facebook. And there are many friends who are interested to listen to. To not talk, but because those who live in Asian countries, 7:30 to 9 p.m. in the UK, is too late for them. So, for those who would like to follow and what we have been doing, you can always go back to listen to the talk on the Buddha p a t i p a Temple Facebook page. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. I wish you a pleasant sleep. Thank you.